Hi, I'm Annika Johnsons from Al Johnsons in Sister Bay. I hope you enjoy my new video series called Door County Girl. These are stories of my life, the people and places that I love, and of course, how we all survive here in Northern Wisconsin. You can come back as often as you like, but don't forget to subscribe to Al's YouTube channel. I'll be posting lots of really cool new videos. So let's go. Annika Johnson. I'm back with another episode of the Door County Girl with my brother Rolf Johnson. Greetings. Today we are going to do a charcuterie. You got it. Which I like to call a giant lunchable. Yeah, either that or a smorgasbord on the miniature version. Yeah, a little <laughs> smorgasbord on a plate, a little bit of this, all kinds of little goodies. Uh, Rolf's going to kind of explain a little bit. What's good about this is if you have a company coming over and you have nothing else to offer them, you know, you can make a meal out of a lot of small things. So what we're going to do today, though, is I got some, uh, uh, some of the cheese is imported, some of it's local. Uh, what's great about the cheese is obviously we live in Wisconsin, right? Yep. America's dairy land, and they have the best cheeses in the world. Now, that being said, I do import some as well because they have some unusual cheeses elsewhere, such as this one here that's available in our gift shop. What is uh, it? This is a Norwegian cheese. It's uh, called Gilst. It's a goat cheese. Oh, the brand is Ski is Queen. Brown? Well, they put a little caramel coloring in this one, and I know some people like this grilled, and uh, of course on bread, and it's got a uh, almost a nutty, nutty taste, like a peanut butter almost, okay. and it's also great with you know what, lingonberries. Well, and, that's raspberry jam. But oh, we did I get the wrong one? We have no. a jar of lingonberries <laughs> There we here go. Sorry around. about that, hammerhead. Yes, we do. So, Anyhow, and then you know what else? That we doesn't melt too good on a sandwich. It, it's kind of a not such an oily cheese. So. Right, it gets soft. Yeah, it doesn't give a smooth right, melt. Right, right, not like you're used to, like your creamy right. grilled cheese. And yeah. then we have uh, some um, uh, scorv, right? That's yetteboer. And this this is famous for their uh, scorv, right? What is yetteboer in English? What is yetteboer in English? Gothenburg. It's a city in Sweden. Uh, yetteboer sausage. Uh, you can get it at our boutique how in do you, the how do you say How do you say the other city in Swedish? How do you say it in English? Stockholm. Stockholm. It's the same. Why isn't it the same in English? I have no idea. <laughs> okay. I and, have no idea. And then we have, uh, of course, our pickled beets, yep. our Swedish mustard. Which is, we're using slots. This Swedish is all available mustard. online or at Al Johnson's. And we have our own pickled herring. It's our recipe. We also have the uh, pickled cucumbers, our recipe. We have some fresh fruit. And most importantly, we have a wonderful potato sausage. And the potato sausage recipe handed down from another old Swede that I stole from a guy years ago. And we make it in-house, but when it gets to the, the busy season, I go to my friends at Marchant's Meat Market in Sturgeon Bay, and they make it according to my recipe the ones that's available to us. Now, okay, there's a little so different wait, in the store. Wait, 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 okay. I have a better story. Okay. So when we were growing up, mom always went to the Pioneer, no, no, uh, no, no, the Beach no, Road no. Market. Beach Road Market. Beach Road Market, which is now the Door County Ice Cream Factory. And we would go there, and Paul Hulbert and his wife ran the, the grocery Beach Road store. Market, and he made his own potato sauce. The best. The best, right? We only got that at Christmas, and we always got it from Paul Well, there Hulbert. was always this kind of debate going around Door County. It came from Herman Steebs, who was a meat packer, uh, a grocer who cut all his own meat. He's his own, he was a butcher, and uh, also my best friend's father. And he had a grocery store, which is now the Door Deli, and or Grassy's Grill. Steve's grocery store where Herman worked it was called it was called Happy Herman Happy Herman when Oscar uh, Scott came along which is now the Grassy's Grill right when yeah. Oscar came along Scott not our, not our goat it was called Happy Herman and Son yeah and then when Patrick came along that was Happy Rolf's Herman best and friend. yep and Happy Herman and Sons so that was the uh, I guess the history of the Happy Herman super duper market right but anyway uh, so he had the same recipe George Jiski had the recipe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, another guy. guy. I forgot yeah. that. So, and, I, and I remember, I think it was Fuzzy Sunstrom from Fuzzy's Grill and Little Sister Resort. Wait, now, George Jiski used to be a janitor at Gibraltar High School, right? Custodial engineer, yes. Custodial engineer. Yeah, so it's not. Yes. 
And, these guys uh, had some great potato sausage and recipes. And they had great stories as well. I used to love listening to these guys. But anyway, I think years ago we were fighting for that recipe. Patrick didn't have it from Herman. Uh, Elaine Johnson, who was another fallback, she didn't have it. Elaine and Johnson. She, and she her bought the uh, Halber Halberds uh, Beach Road Market after they had You mean Elaine Johnson, the fish lady? The fish the lady. The dollar whitefish from? Yes, the one who just... Who we love. Yes, and who just she recently just passed, passed away. away, but she was a world of history. Yes. So... Uh, and one of my, one of Dad's best friends. Oh, by far. Oh, yeah. She had one fault. What? She was Norwegian. Oh, that's right. <laughs> they that's used to duke right. it out like that all the yep, time. Yep. And all in jest, all in yeah, fun. I remember uh, that now. My mom thinks she's Norwegian, so we always tease her about that because... Uh -huh. I don't know. That's a whole other issue. But I'll say, so uh, I, I believe it was Fuzzy Sundstrom. Uh, Greg Sundstrom and I were looking for that recipe. He claimed to have it from and George Fuzzy Sundstrom Gisky. owned... They have uh, Fuzzy's Grill, but there's also Little Sister Resort. Which they are just sold. Well, it's still kind of going on right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So, He's a big Norwegian cross-country skier. Yep. All, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wonderful yeah. guy. So anyway, so he had the recipe, but I didn't get it from him. I got. I called up Paul Hulbert one day and I said, "Hey, I need this recipe, and I need a, a, a machine to pack the sausage with, you know, so and the casing and everything else." He was 82 years old. He shows up in a Buick LeSabre, and he opens a trunk of his car and he lifts this thing up, which weighs approximately 85 pounds, oh and he God. carries it in. I said, "Well, do you have the recipe?" And he reaches into his pocket and he pulls up this tattered little piece of paper and says, "Here it is." <laughs> and I said, "That's how you carry it?" And he goes, "No, nah, it's all right." Oh, I grabbed it and I wrote it all down, so I had it as well. And so. it was funny because we used to love going to that grocery store. Oh, yeah, I loved it. And he had a little meat counter in the back, yep. and uh, he was kind of ca of a character. Absolutely, yeah. Real sarcastic, yep. but funny. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're kind of the guy you're scared of a little bit, but you just can't wait to see him. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice guy. Yeah. Very nice guy. Yeah. Well, he helped me along with the made potato sausage, and one day someone was kind of calling up and saying, can we get some potato sausage? And I said, hey, well, I was bragging about that I got the Beach Road Market Paul Halbert recipe. Oh, and boy, here we go. Then and Ralph it, had to make everybody you potato sausage I was sitting down there until 3 in the morning every single and night. And every time I would get a phone call, Ralph goes, you got to be effing kidding me. Yeah. Because I can't even, he's learning how to make it, learning how to make it. He, and the casing would, break, would break, and the casing yeah. would break. I was and not he, good at it. Yeah, he was not good at it. But, but he had all these orders. I asked a couple other people to do it other meat guys to do it and they just couldn't get it right and then I went to Marchant's and I said it's got to be this recipe it has to be this recipe which means he has to break everything down and make mine separately what did they think about it when you asked them? they loved it actually when I was talking to their meat guy uh, he said to me that uh, he gave it to an old Swede and he said it was the best he ever had. And so do they sell it at Merchant Market or just sell No, it? they sell their own version of theirs there, but they make ours for us. So So they can't sell it there or well, they just choose not to because they I have think their they own choose version. not to because yeah. they have their yeah. own version, sure. Yeah. But okay. uh, wonderful meat market. If you get a chance, visit them. They got the best. Yeah. All right. So anyhow, so let's uh, put this little tray together, right? I have a fast question. Well, shoot. What's in the potato sausage? Potatoes? A secret. It's a secret? It's a big secret. Are we going to tell them? Well, it's, 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 I can give them this much. It's an equal amount of pork, beef, potatoes. So those are the equal amounts. And then it's the rest of it's a secret ingredient. The secret spices. Yeah. Like Kentucky Fried Chicken seasonings. Exactly. Secret. Okay. So, and uh, somebody else has to have their own story when they wrestle it out of my fingers. What One happens day when, when I you pull die? Are you going to hand me that piece I'm of gonna, paper? Yeah, I got the piece of paper. Awesome. So anyhow, we got the ski queen here, right? So we're going to... Open this up, and we're going to make some cheese. And we sell Ski Queen at uh, the boutique. We do. And if we are out of it, I know they carry it up at the top shelf in Sister Bay there, I, I think. I'll so send some people that way if we're ever out. So all we got to do is put You know what I like about this? Because it's a little brown, and it gives a little color to the plate, because a lot of the cheeses are kind of white and bland or not too colorful so this kind of gives a little plate a little bit of zing so all we have to do like i say when you got company coming over you're just going to put together a yeah, cheese instead and of meat making platter. a whole bunch of like items to put out like a buffet you just put one little plate out and they can have little you can put nuts on it things like that okay we're gonna swedish meatballs on there we're gonna throw this brie on there yeah and you know what's good on the brie lingonberries but also Al right. Johnson's Swedish. So, for those of you that don't know, raspberries. That's my favorite. So, raspberry jam we get from Sweden as well, 
And we also get a uh, strawberry jam. And what I like about our jams is they're not thick. They're a little bit spreadable, as you can see. And you can always put them on, uh, like, again, in a smoothie if you have to. Delicious. Um, super delicious. And the, these are equally as good on, on, on pancakes, Yes, too. because it spreads. Oh, the crazy Instead good. Instead of, like, glopping it on like jelly, it spreads around. So they're, if you don't like the lingonberries on our Swedish pancakes, you should always try the strawberry jam and the raspberry jam, which we sell online as well. So, so Ralph's cutting up that... Yetebor sausage, which is Swedish for Gothenburg, Sweden. That's and it's, another... it's up to you if you want to take the skin off, you can. Otherwise, it gives something for people to do while they help themselves to the meat and cheese platter. I love sausage. Does it taste like venison? Does it taste like our sausage? You like... know, I haven't had this stuff since well, 1991. <laughs> give, me a little, give me a little sample. I'm going to try one help right yourself. now. I'll tell you what it tastes like. Mm. It's good. Delicious. Huh? It tastes very sausagey. You know what I mean? Like what is very sausagey? Well, the spices that they put in sausage to make it delicious. What is that anyway? What do they put in there to make it so addictive? <laughs> That's secret too. Most Not of it's, secret, it's usually sage, but I don't smell the sage in it's this the type of sausage. Same stuff they put in French fries because I can't stop eating them oh, in the yeah. kitchen. It's, uh, and you can't either. Oh no. There's nothing better than French fries, oh which is sad, but. Okay, so Ralph is putting on a Montrachev, which is a goat cheese. And again, we're gonna put some lingonberries on there because I think it looks delicious with it on there and tastes delicious. And again, right down the middle. You can always keep these off to the side in case people want a little more because, again, it might be good on the sausage, which Ralph will never know. Ooh. So that's very mm -hmm. different, too. Delicious. Does it taste like Halbert's? Mm -hmm. Exactly, except for how come this looks different? Looks like a bratwurst. How come when we got it from mom, mom would just boil it and give well, it to there's, us? Well, there's a number of ways to, to uh, you can prepare the potato sausage. Mm, so it, is, it is raw to start out with. Mm -hmm. This one here I grilled this morning. Uh, otherwise, mom usually boils it. Do you remember? Yeah, she, always, she used to have a big pot. She puts it in water. She adds a little extra allspice to float around, some onion and in onions. there. And she just brings it to a soft boil, and then she puts it on simmer maybe eight minutes and it's good to go. And uh, you know, I, I like it that way as well. And you know when what I the difference is? You know what I can tell the difference right away? When she puts it in the water and boils it, if you eat it, the consistency is more fluffy or powdery when, and versus when you grill it, it's a little more firm. You know? Right, and I remember remember when Halbert always had it, we'd always, you'd split that casing over That's and you just let it kind of fall out and then you'd eat it with the Swedish mustard and uh, mm. oh, that was so good. Super good. Mm. So then you would add all these other ingredients here. We would have, what do you have there? Oh, these are available. These are cool. You see these? Mm -hmm. Every Swede has a wooden knife in their butter bowl. Every one. Every one I've ever been to anyway. Our little wooden knife has our little Al Johnson logo on there. Yeah. Little Al Johnson logo. However, everybody knows that I'm the shipper by now, right? Because I always look at all the new product. These are my favorite, Rolf. Check these out. What are these? Those are a little spreader. They look like they're, they're made mosaic. out of. They look like they're made out of beech or something, or birch cool? maybe. And one is a little fork. Like and a herring a little fork. Spreader, and you can just jab the meat with it. But you know what I like? Oh, it works good for the herring too. Check that out. Yep. Put, you got to put, I know, they're good for everything, jabbing everything. And w look at these. Okay, so this would be ideal. Check it out. This would be ideal instead of having a big plate like this, if it's a twosome or by yourself, it's almost like a mini TV tr or dinner tray. Or if I wanted to give you a little vegetarian gift, I could put it on there, wrap, wrap it with it some up. cellophane. There you go. Here you go, Rolf. Very cool. A little tasty snack. This has a nautical theme. This has a country theme. Yeah. And, and what is in the oh larger boy. one there? That's for the two. Dollar horse, if you want to go for the giant jumbo package, what do you call it at the drive through Do you want to go for the big yeah, one or the little the, one? The big gulp. The big gulp or the small gulp? Yeah. Yep. Those are cool. I know. These are, are these awesome. available too in the yep. gift shop? Online. Online as well? Yep. And on our boutique. All right. So we need some bread and crackers. I think you might oh, have some yeah. here somewhere. 
We have, always have to have limpa bread, which is my favorite bread. And my favorite is the Kneka bread, the hardtack, as they call it in America. Uh, stuff's phenomenal. Again, what's nice about this kind of stuff, when you buy it, you have it forever in yours. It lasts forever. You keep it airtight and it's so good. It's yeah. meant to be stale, a little bit crispy. Yeah, I have a big wooden uh, round thing with a lid and I keep all my hard tack in there. And I, whenever I just pop the lid open, grab one. I save, all the, I save all the peppercocker tins and put it in there. Yeah, or we Great. have those, yeah. The limpa bread uh, is our limpa bread with our recipe and it is uh, anise, orange rind, fennel, and it's a rye bread. It's yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a light rye. rye bread. Yeah, it doesn't. It's not overwhelming. It's not like a pumpernickel or anything like that. Okay, and I really it. don't care for caraway, but the little seeds that you see in there aren't caraway. Those uh, that is the uh, fennel. Uh, fennel seeds. Yes. Yeah, that's why I love our limpa so yeah. much. And, it's not and, sour, doughy. Sour. I like it too. You can look real close. You can see the orange rind in there as yep, well. Yeah, little chunks of orange. And uh, I know when Mom has it, she has to have a lot of orange in hers. You know. And there's a couple of good Swedish bakeries around. Colleen's Bakery, she does a nice job. Yep. Heritage Bakery. And my mom, my mom, if she was here right now, she'd take a piece yeah, of limpa bread. And this would be her butter. Where's your butter? Because <laughs> my mom would just take this whole thing. Because she's And it'd be this Swedish. thick with butter on top. And then she'd put on this and this and this and everything else. But I'm like, oh, where'd the butter go? The Swedes love their smur. Yeah, they love smur, butter. Okay, so what else are we going to put on here? Some pickled beets? You have your pickled beets. Those can go on there, or you can put those on the side. But this is what you would serve as a holly, maybe a little uh, uh, holiday platter. Yeah, sometimes things get messy, so you can always put them in little cups like these. But leave this out on a buffet-like table or something where people can just pick up their stuff and go. Of course, they would grab their crackers. They would grab their cheese. They would grab the uh, beets, however they want to do it. Um, I'm going to cross-contaminate here because I want to get some of these... Uh, delicious cucumbers that Ooh, we yeah, have. Yeah, the cucumber salad's delicious. It's real sweet and sour, but not too sweet. And I'm going to use my like fingers because I used them already. Lots of onions in there. You know, I have to honestly say, I don't like herring. How come? I'm a Swede and I don't <laughs> like herring. And if we were all starving, I don't even know that I could still eat it. But everybody who loves all herring right. loves it. Herring is like uh, Swedish sushi. Yeah. You know, it, uh, if, you, if you haven't had it, don't turn your nose up on it. It's, it's delicious. Ah, look at me. <laughs> I'm the guest you don't want at your table. Nah, she's a barrel of fun at your table. All right. All right, I'm going to make a mess with this table here if I here? eat this. I'm going to put a little of this goat cheese Grab on me there. there. What are we doing right here? here? I'm having a mustard. Some Swedish mustard, and I'm going to have the Yektabor sausage. Okay, what do you have? I'm having yours? the uh, Kneka bread, our famous uh, cucumber salad, and the Ski Queen goat cheese. Hey, wait, I forgot And this. I'm going, oh shoot, I, that's, that's going to be my next sandwich. Oh yeah, well this is mine. Don't think you're going to eat my stuff. Because look at my masterpiece. Oh, well, you know what? I'm getting jealous. Give me some of the lingonberries. Yep. Lingonberries on everything because we love them. I like the Fin Crisp, these real thin little crackers. No, not me. They're a rye, yeah. but they're, you know why I like them? Because they're super crunchy. I don't like them near as much as I like the Kaneka bread, the hard tech, the, the sourdough one. Ooh. So anyway, here's to you, hey? Yeah. Let me check it out. Uh-oh. <laughs> we aren't very dainty eaters, are we? Doesn't matter. Ralph and I are used to just eating on the fly. Like when we're in the kitchen and working all day, isn't this something you could just slam in your mouth? Because you don't have time to eat lunch. We could have a little platter out for you. you. Yeah. You don't finish it, wrap it up. You can graze on it all day long, and when you're done, you just put a little cellophane on it and put it in the fridge. I mean, use your imagination. Mm -hmm. I love it. Well, anyway. It probably hmm. comes to an end to your episode. Yeah. Um, don't forget to check us out online for um, and subscribe. YouTube. Yeah, to our YouTube channel. Yep, like and subscribe, right? Door County Girl. And, uh, and look for our products available online as well. Unfortunately, Rolf won't be in all my episodes because you kind of screw things up sometimes. Somet and, you know, you, I don't know. Come out and check me out at the campground name. sometime. Ah. Oh, yeah. My brother Rolf. Lose some winter camping. Has a tiny island that he lives on. It's a secret. <laughs>
It's a tiny island, and every year I get him something for his tiny island to live on. But I would love to do, um, I'll bring a little platter like this, and we can do uh, stories around the campfire out there. Yeah, be good. A little uh, be awesome. welcoming present. What happened out there one time? It was like five in the morning. Oh, when more, more, or for far more came, or uh, my mother, my mom. My mom. Yeah. <laughs> Our mom. What did she do? That was last year. I went out there. <clears throat> I had the day off for my birthday, and I thought, I'm going to camp out overnight. Uh-huh. So I'm out there camping out, and it's the perfect morning. The sunrise is coming up over Lake Michigan, and all of a sudden I get my phone. Uh, it's his sanctuary. He doesn't yeah, want anyone to bother out him out there at all. And all of a sudden I'm sitting outside <clears throat> on a rock, and the water's lapping up. It's a calm day, a calm morning. And all of a sudden I hear somebody in the woods, Ralph. Rolf. It's not Rolf. It's Rolf, Rolf, it's, Rolf. You have to roll, roll your, your eyes. eyes. And if you can't roll them, practice saying better than, better than, better than. <laughs> That's what works for me. <laughs> but she's out there, Rolf. And I'm like, Mom? And she comes up, she's got a thermos of coffee, some homemade bulla, and some uh, knekka bread, and some cheese. And she says, happy birthday. It's a fika. Yeah, it's a fika time. Fika for your breakfast for your birthday. That was fantastic. I, I, I took a picture and a little video yeah, of it. Yeah, you sent it to me. <laughs> it was, and I was like, oh my God, it's only five in the morning. Yeah, what in the world? That was fantastic. That was awesome. Only mom. <laughs> That's right. Well, anyway, thanks for joining us. I'll see you again at work. And I'll see you at work. All right. Thanks for watching Door County Girl. Don't forget to subscribe and we will see you next time.